G'day guys, welcome to video 4 for Year 9 Geology, uh, Tectonic Theory, what is it? We're going to look at uh, explaining this topic a little bit of depth on this one. Uh, we're not going to go too much into the history, that'll come a little bit later on, uh, but in this case we're just going to sort of establish what the theory is. So our Walt, well, we're going to have a look at an overview of plate tectonic theory. Uh, we look at some of the modern evidence of uh, plate tectonic theory, so you should be able to explain what it is and tell me how this evidence supports the theory. So why are we doing this? Uh, something that's really important in science is that even established ideas have to be continually tested with new evidence. Uh, if something new pops up that can't be explained, that theory then needs to be you know, re-examined or we need to look for uh, a better way of explaining everything, not just the bits that we can. Um, it's not to say that things are useless, for example, uh, you'll learn about Newton's laws of motion. Um, they're really good for a lot of stuff, but they don't you know, fully explain things at all levels. So in certain, si si certain si situations, bleh, uh, we have to sort of put it to the side and go with a more complete model. Um, so some theories sometimes get a little bit shelved off to the side isn't, or defined as saying they only work for certain regions. Sometimes though a theory gets thrown out. So what is plate tectonic theory? Plate tectonic theory is the theory that describes large scale motion of seven or eight depending on how you count them, uh, plates and lots of little small plates that make up the surface of the earth. That's all it is. Now I want to talk about this word theory because sometimes this pops up a little bit of an issue. Now a theory is an explanation with significant evidence, and there's an important part, it has to have significant evidence that explains part of the natural world, okay, and evidence has been gathered by observation experiment and provides further testable opportunities. If something doesn't allow it to be tested, it's not a scientific theory. Okay, it needs to make some predictions that we can go off and check. Now, uh, remember there's a uh, video reference down here as well for uh, having a look on my OneDrive. So this is a plate. Now, I don't even know if this is an accurate map of the world <laughs> because uh, it's just sort of, um, well, it's just random bits of green and blue. But the whole idea of a plate is that the Earth is made up of several pieces. They fit together kind of like a broken eggshell and they move. That's it. But unlike an eggshell that's broken, uh, the Earth keeps making new eggshell to go on the outside. And this is how they look. So there is a worksheet for this on eLearn, and if you're uh, being provided with a booklet, there is a copy, or the, it's in the booklet itself, uh, but you'll need to have this uh, as part of your record. Um, they've got names. Uh, you don't need to memorize the names, but uh, having some examples in your head can be really useful. And one thing I want to point out, and we're going to come back to this a little bit later, are these little red arrows that you can see uh, between a few different plates. So here between the Pacific plate, this big yellow one, and the Australian plate here, we have a couple of convergent boundaries where it's saying that these two things are coming together. Over here, uh, between the Pacific and the Nazcar plate, uh, and, or the Pacific here and the Antarctic plate, you see the arrows are pointing away. It's divergent, it's spreading. Uh, and the last example, uh, up here around Los Angeles, between the Pacific and the North American, uh, then they are the arrows are pointing uh, parallel with each other in different directions, and this is an example of a transverse uh, plate boundary where things are sliding past. I would really recommend you keep that one in mind, because uh, as you can see on this map, uh, to the best of my knowledge, and I've had a look for a couple of years, that's the only transverse boundary that's labelled on it. Uh, so, good to keep in mind. So, uh, just pointing them all out. Uh, the Pacific Plate. Oh, my arrows don't line up, sorry, when I changed the font. So, Pacific Plate down here, North American Plate, South American Plate, Australian, Antarctic, African, Eurasian. And this one down here is the weird one. Um, the Indian plate there, uh, and that's why I've got a little star next to it, some uh, geologists consider it a major plate, one of the eight big ones, 
some of them consider it a minor plate or an intermediate plate because the size of it is not so large like if you look over here Nazca Nazca didn't get mentioned but it's bigger than the Indian plate however the Indian plate that is you know uh, commonly referred to as the Indian subcontinent uh, because it's a separate piece of land mass compared to the Asian um, plate and they're pushing together you know it's caused the world's highest mountain Mount Everest and there's a billion people living on it so it kind of gets promoted up a bit well you know, Nazca plate is underwater so yeah oh well let's not uh, worry about it being too special so uh, now these plates compared to you and me they're going slow okay you could easily outrun it or outwalk it or outroll it or outcrawl it and okay? Uh, the African plate goes about two centimeters a year. Uh, the Tongan microplate, even though it's the fastest, is about 24 centimeters a year. So you, know, you could just take one meter step, and in four years the plate would catch up to you. Not even be a bit under. Australia moves northeast at about six centimeters per year. Now, so when we talk about geology, we tend to think about very, very long periods of time. So have a watch at this video, Earth 100 million years from now. It will show you how we've modelled uh, the Earth moving forward in time. And it also shows you how we've modelled the movement of the Earth going back in time. Uh, back to when uh, Earth was once more formed together on one plate. When it's broken apart, when it's come back together again. Uh, and predicting forward to the next time... You know, the continents will come back together and then separate. Uh, I believe it's something like um, uh, at about the 100 million year mark, a bit before it, Australia will be up sitting next to Russia. So it will be the northern hemisphere. We'll just keep drifting north for quite some time. So here's African plate, and here's the Tongan microplate, uh, this small section in here between the Pacific and the Australian plate. Now, uh, this plate here going this way and the Pacific plate coming this way does mean, and there's a couple of earthquakes marked there, that uh, Tonga for example is slowly moving east and may get pulled under the Pacific plate. Uh, while this bit here as the Australia plate separates away from it, we might get some new volcanoes popping up uh, through that area there. Uh, as we've seen volcanoes in very specific areas and parts where plates separate are one of those so we might get some new islands forming there or we might see some of those volcanoes like we saw with uh, plate boundary volcanoes uh, as these two plates come together we might get some new volcanoes uh, spawning over here in the uh, Pacific area so the theory itself plate tectonics is a theory is about 60 years old um, when it was first developed, and we'll talk about the history as I said in a couple of lessons, it was laughed out. Uh, they're like, nah, no, nah, no, nah, you're crazy. Because the prevalent idea was that the world was perfect, it looked the way that it looked, and it always looked the way that it looked. Uh, and we'll talk about Alfred Wegener's work on that in a little bit, uh, or in coming videos, but um, he based his ideas off of looking at the shape of the land and looking at land features like mountain ranges and looking at certain fossils found in different places and proposed it and it was tossed out but uh, modern discoveries from about the time of World War II uh, started giving credence to the idea and so these were sonar mapping sonar is basically seeing with sound like how bats fly around if you hear them screeching when they fly above us at night they're using that to help locate prey and each other. Um, the whole idea that bats are blind is actually a myth. They actually have okay eyesight, but the sound is obviously a, a lot better for them to help detect things. Uh, paleomagnetic patterning. Paleo just means really old. Magnetic magnets. Uh, earthquake epicenters, volcano locations, which we've seen in previous videos. And GPS satellite tracking is pretty useful as well. So let's go through some of those. Um, the sonar mapping of the Atlantic Ocean was done as part of World War II and after World War II was finished, uh, universities started requesting maps of the US government, they got access to it and they started mapping 
um, the, the Atlantic Ocean. Now they may have done some during it, but it'd probably be classified, so they're not allowed to talk about it. But the maps are out there now. Um, so they use sonar, which is basically just pinging the ground and having it bounce back, or pinging the bottom of the ocean, and then it bounces back, and they work out how deep it is by looking at how long the ping takes. Uh, and it shows underwater mountain ranges. And you can go on Google Google Earth, so I'd really suggest you do that. Go on Google Earth and load up the terrain-style map, and you can see these mountain ranges underneath uh, the oceans. So I'll show you a picture of it here. So here is a mountain range that stretches the entire Atlantic Ocean. In fact, this mountain range continues on and goes all the way around pretty much the whole world. It's this huge mountain range okay, that comes about because of the separation of plates. Now there's a video on this topic as well that's well worth your watching, so take a look at that. It's on my OneDrive. Um, you can see some other bits here, these, these lines here. These aren't um, mountain ranges, these are trenches. So they're going into the ground, while these ones are coming up out of the ocean, or up out of the ocean floor. They don't quite reach to the surface. And this is basically what it looks like. You've got these two plates, they're moving away from each other, and so you end up having magma come up, reaches the surface, it's underwater but it's still the surface, becomes lava and cools down really quickly because the water cools it down, and so then over time you end up with these bits of lava building up, and if the plate doesn't spread all that fast but you've got a lot of lava coming through, you get a bigger mountain, if the plate spreads really fast, you get a flatter mountain. Now the second thing is paleomagnetic evidence. As I said, paleo just means really old. So it's looking at the magnetic information about uh, the Earth in long time, or deep time. Now, our molten core, the Earth is molten in the middle, and that moving iron around an iron nickel core we think is what's causing the magnetic field. We're pretty certain of it, but you know, it's pretty hard to test it directly, so we're going off best models and uh, doing our own small-scale experiments. But the thing is, it changes direction. And what's really weird is it changes, um, uh, sorry, it changes in strength, but changes in direction as well. Uh, what is north at the moment for us could, very so shortly actually, uh, swap. And all our magnets, so all our compasses, would point towards the South Pole, somewhere in the South. In fact, the poles move, they don't even stay in the same spot. They go wandering all over the place. Now, if you've ever made a magnet, and what I mean by that is if you get a permanent magnet, like a bar magnet, you get a piece of metal and you strike it with one end of the magnet and then drag the magnet down. So if this is my cylinder. If this is my magnet, and I know it's just sort of a shadow, but if I hit it and then drag it down, and I keep doing this over and over, so if my finger was the magnet uh, and this pen was a piece of metal, uh, it would then make it magnetic for a while. It would lose its magnetism, but it would impart a bit of magnetism. Um, and if you're interested in that, take physics in year 11 and 12, and we'll explain magnets to you then. Um, but if you have molten rock and you put a magnet through it, or you have molten metal and you put a magnetic field through it, then it will become a magnet. In fact, that's one way we can make really strong permanent magnets by using a molten metal, run a magnetic field through it, cools down, it becomes a magnet, and then we can use that magnet for other things. So this is a graph of it. Oh, sorry, let's do uh, the magnetic field. This is commonly how it's drawn. So treat the Earth as a big magnetic pole, and you've got these magnetic sort of loops coming out, and they're called field lines. Okay? Uh, and there's a nice pretty picture of it. You can see, oh yeah, with the compass, and these nice neat lines coming out of it. It doesn't look like this. Uh, it more looks like this. Uh, you're not expected to be able to draw this or memorize this, but I just did want to get to the idea that it is a very messy thing. It's not a perfect, uh, elegant solution. It's uh, messy and real. But this is what, if we go and study, and I think this one is the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, actually. If we go and study the magnetic field strength at different places, they just 
have a robot, they go along, they take a sample, and then they look at how strong the magnetic, that how strong the magnet is there, uh, or how strongly it reacts to our magnets. Uh, we find that right in the middle, that bit there's a bit weak, but if you go either side, it gets stronger. Then after a period of time, it flips, goes the other direction, and then it comes back to nearly nothing, and then it goes down a bit, then it flips again, and then it flips back again. And you see how, even though it's not perfect, okay, either side of this ridge point is pretty similar. Okay, there's a, there is a pattern there that you can see. Okay, it's not like there's a bit where over on this side it's up here, but on this side it's down here. Okay, so the size of the thickness might be a little bit different. Uh, because it will depend on how quickly that side of the ridge is growing. Maybe you know the rock that oozes to the left is just a little bit easier than the rock that oozes to the right, or perhaps the rock that happened to go right had a little bit less uh, magnetic ability compared to some that went left. Like this spike here looks a little different to this spike here. But this is a fairly strong evidence that hey. Um, these two pieces, like the way to get this pattern, well, these two pieces would have once been together. And so it tells us it's moved apart over time. That's one way of explaining that evidence. So, so far we've got sonar mapping that there are big mountains. And when we look either side of these mountains under the ocean, we get that either side is a mirror image magnet. Okay. Uh, as I said, okay, yep, that's just what I've explained. Uh, so feel free to take notes on that. The earthquake and volcano location, locations, well, they appear near these ridges. Earthquakes are very common for these mount these underwater mountains, uh, and volcanoes are mostly found near these boundaries as well. Again, not all boundaries, but most of these boundaries have these sort of volcanoes near it. And, well, the last most o obvious um, evidence we can have is we can see it. Humans are at the point now where we have eyes in space tracking things on Earth, and one thing that we've done is track how the Earth moves, because if we didn't, our GPS system, the stuff you might put on your phone and go, alright, let's get to you know, Bob's place, or let's go and check out this f new fancy food restaurant, you know, if the GPS could not account for the movement of the Earth, your GPS would go wrong you know, within a few years, and some things would just start to slowly shift off. But because we can actually sit there and measure it, now we know how fast these are going, okay? And it's a very conclusive bit of evidence, because if you can see it happening, you know, well, or you can directly measure it happening, you're like, okay, well, it must be true then, because we've directly measured it. And this is the data for it. So Australia, you can see, you know, we're scooting up there. Um, this part of Africa is actually starting to separate off this way. So there's sort of a minor plate through here. So Africa, like that lake, might start to get larger through there. Europe is very heavily going northeast. Uh, South America, a bit drift up this way, a bit of a movement up that way. You can see this here, a bit of chaos. That's the San Andreas Fault. Uh, who knows where that'll go for a while. Uh, and this is sort of a cleaner map of it. And so you can see there the general patterns of things moving. Australia going up this way, Pacific plate coming up this way, but Japan or the Philippines plate coming that way. Uh, we've got you know, bits of Africa coming up there, you know, this bit all going up that way, while this bit goes that way, so that's tearing apart between there. So these plates are, you know, they're moving around. Antarctica kind of looks weird because remember it's at the bottom of the ocean, the bottom of the Earth, uh, and it's taken the cap of a sphere and represented it as a flat item. So uh, just be a bit aware that looking at the poles can be a little bit um, uh, what's I'm looking for disjointed because uh, it is representing the bottom of something but pasted onto a flat surface. All right, so this is the end of our video on tectonics. Um, we're going to look at some of the mechanisms uh, in the coming lessons as well as the history, but this just gives you an overview of what is tectonic theory and how do we know this is actually true. All right.
thanks for listening guys remember email me if you've got any problems if there is anything else that is coming up don't hesitate to reach out uh, this is all pretty difficult for everybody so stay safe study hard and i'll see you soon bye